No man can fully grasp how far and how fast we have come. But condense, if you will, the 50,000 years of man's recorded history in a time span of but a half a century. Stated in these terms, we know very little about the first 40 years, except at the end of them, advanced man had learned to use the skins of animals to cover them. Then about 10 years ago, under this standard, man emerged from his caves to construct other kinds of shelter. Only five years ago, man learned to write and use a cart with wheels. Christianity began less than two years ago. The printing press came this year. And then less than two months ago, during this whole 50 year span of human history, the steam engine provided a new source of power. Newton explored the meaning of gravity. Last month, electric lights and telephones and automobiles and airplanes became available. Only last week, we developed penicillin and television and nuclear power. And now, if America's new spacecraft succeeds in reaching Venus, we will have literally reached the stars before midnight tonight. This is a breathtaking pace. And such a pace cannot help but create new ills as it dispels old. New ignorance, new problems, new dangers. Surely the opening vistas of space promise high costs and hardships as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer to rest, to wait. But this city of Houston, this state of Texas, this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. For the eyes of the world now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. The exploration of space will go ahead, whether we join in it or not. And it is one of the great adventures of all time. Those who came before us made certain that this country rode the first waves of the Industrial Revolution, the first waves of modern invention, and the first wave of nuclear power. And this generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. And its opportunity for peaceful cooperation may never come again. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win on the other side. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot.
I think the momentous, uh, most memorable thing that I can recall about that particular day was the opportunity while my uh, my two friends here were being put into the spacecraft to uh, stand alone by myself uh, out there and, and look at the rocket and the quietness and see the sun come up and the waves rolling in and the evidence of the millions of people uh, watching but but nothing specific and just so quiet and to realize that indeed uh, such a contrast was going to take place all the frantic activity preparing the rocket but it was so quiet up there for me personally and that in a very few moments uh, we were going to be uh, departing in a in a great roar and offer a momentous uh, event I thought uh, we had a 90% chance of getting back safely to Earth on that flight, but only a 50-50 a chance of making a successful landing on the first, first attempt. There's so many unknowns in that descending from lunar orbit down to the surface that had not been demonstrated yet by testing. It's a risk-reward uh, equation, and uh, you're able to accept a level of risk so long as it's commensurate with the reward that you will get by achieving the goal that you're after.
I think certainly to go as far away as the uh, moon and look back on the Earth uh, certainly does uh, affect your perspective. Uh, and then when you see it, tiny as your thumbnail held out in front of you at arm's length, uh, that sort of gets your attention. A beautiful sight, tiny, pristine, blue and white, a very fragile looking object, uh, shining like a beautiful little headlight out there in the black velvet of space. It does change your perspective. It makes you think that we have to take better care of this little fragile entity because it is fragile. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition and everything is go. Roger, Apollo 11 is go.
I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. Uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Yes, the uh, surface is fine and powdery. I can, I can pick it up loosely with my toe. It does adhere to in fine layers, uh, like uh, powdered charcoal, to the uh, to the sole and sides of my boots. I only go in a uh, small fraction of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, but I can see the footprints of my uh, boots and the treads and the fine sandy particles. Hey, this is Houston. We're copying. Um, there seems to be no difficulty in moving around as, as we suspected. Uh, it's even perhaps easier than the simulations of 16G that uh, we performed uh, in various simulations on the ground. Absolutely no trouble to. Uh, walk around.